All right, so I'm excited. I have Mark Lackey here with Hire Smart VAs. It's Ann and Mark. He works with his wife, and his wife has another appointment to get to here today. So today we're blessed to have Mark, and thanks so much for having uh, for taking the time today to be on the Championship Leadership Podcast. Really appreciate it. I really appreciate being here. Sorry, Ann can't be with me. We do almost everything together, but <laughs> today we're split apart. But thank you so much. It's a yeah. pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. And uh, so. You know, the first question I'd like to ask is the name of the podcast, the championship leadership. What, what first comes to mind when you hear championship leadership? Well, when I hear that, it, it, it brings back some memories of how Ann and I got started in our business because the key to going out on your own and making some tough decisions, and they are tough to start a business on your own. Since we started out 19 years ago, beginning our first business, it's evolved and we've taken more and more challenges on and now operate six different businesses. But to take those initial steps and, and to take those challenges on is, is really tough in the beginning because you, you get that on a road after you've gone to school and learned how to work for somebody and they taught you how to show up at your desk and your boss always gave you your work for the day and you show up now at your desk and you're your own boss and you're the one that has to develop what that day looks like and what has to happen. You've got to become the leader where you've never had that as a, a challenge before. So I, I love that concept because I love this idea. I, I, I'm an entrepreneur at heart of solving problems, fixing things. But when you turn that into a business, it's a whole different world. Oh yeah. Isn't it? And um, so, well, yeah, tell us what, what did you do uh, before this? You said 19 years ago, you guys made the leap and decided to, um, you know, listen to what it is that you really wanted. And like you say, it's, it's hard to make that decision. Well, it's hard in a, that it's really probably scary, right? And there's a bit of unknown yeah. and you're not sure what's going to happen, but, but great leaders, championship level leaders, they're all about stepping into the unknown and because they just, they have this belief or this faith that they can go out and do it on their own and, and that, that it will work out. And so what were you guys doing uh, prior to this going out 19 years ago on your own? That's an interesting story. Um, Ann and I were both in outside commission sales and we were part of a networking group that got together and shared business opportunities and, two individuals in that group got ill. One subsequently passed away about a year later. And, and, and in commission sales, if you don't work, you don't make any money. So we were always had the mindset of working for our money. And we looked at each other and said, we needed to do something different and start having our money work for us. And that's when we decided we needed to start a business. And, you know, you can get in, there's a lot of different ways to start businesses. You know, there's multi-level marketing. You can buy a franchise. There's a lot of different things. We made a decision to get into real estate, real estate investing to buy rental homes for passive income. And uh, our first month in the business, we bought four rental homes. We still have those today. Wow. You know, they're, they're uh, producing cash flow. They yeah, still have awesome. tenants in there, still going well. And uh, we, we got into that challenge of doing that so that we would start building a base for our future and it's just kind of evolved. It was really interesting how we got into that. And then a few years later, somebody comes to us and says, can you help me with another part of real estate, which is being an agent and buying and selling homes. Um, and so we became agents and then we became brokers because somebody said, we need a property management company for all these investors from all over the world that are buying homes in this case in Atlanta. Um, so we started up a property management business. And so things have kind of evolved out of opportunities, but they are scary to get started because most people are good at getting an idea started and getting it rolling, but to have it continue and to have a business that's been around for 19 years, not a lot of companies and not a lot of individuals can do that because you know, they're, they're either a good salesperson or they're a good technician in their business. They know how to do the work or they're a good salesperson, they don't know how to run the back office. Yeah. Um, Ann and I found a magic in our love and relationship and marriage and our business where we have unique skill sets where Ann takes part of her skill sets and applies them in our businesses. Mine are different skill sets. 
and I apply. So we each own certain departments as of how we describe it to people. Yeah. So, you know, I've got one department. I got the final say so in that. Now, yeah. gives me input. I give her input. But we know that other person's covering the bases and has each other's backs to the best ability. Our latest business, um, and, and most of these businesses we talk about, you know, we made a lot of investment, a lot of time, a lot of effort and money to grow. Yeah. Our last one, which is our Hire Smart VA, which is our virtual assistant business, we provide full-time virtual assistants to businesses and the virtual assistants work out of the Philippines. So we can get really good people, good mindsets and dollars. But we were sitting at lunch one day with some business friends and business owners and they said, you know, it's, it's, it's really tough keeping staff, having employees around. <clears throat> Y'all must have mastered that because you're very happy because we have a large staff and a large team and all these things going on. And they said, y'all are so happy about what you're doing. And we had shared with them that, well, we brought on board full-time virtual assistants to replace some of the staff as a normal attrition as they left. So I, you know, my phones are being answered, my emails are being answered my sales support, my customer service lines, all those things are being taken care of. And Ann and I are not having to do that on the day to day. And so those two ladies at lunch says, if we stroke you a great big check, would you deliver us five VAs in three weeks? So that challenge set us going into the business. Yeah. And we had never had anybody that said, we'll fund you starting this new business. Usually we're putting the tens of thousands if not more dollars yeah right you getting started you know how that is your business yeah. you throw money at it you create stuff and you hope people want it and many times it doesn't work well, we've had a lot of those failures businesses what we thought was a demanding product or service didn't work in this case it was really unique because somebody paid us to get started and uh, I, I know i'm kind of rambling on but it's, it was an exciting story uh, as we're sharing this, and that was uh, four and a half years ago when we had that luncheon. We took their challenge. We took their checks. Yeah. We put those in the bank quickly. We went back to where we had started hiring our virtual assistants from out of the Philippines, got set up with a, a partner there and developed a relationship to where they're doing part of the business, kind of like how Ann and I split it up. They're the boots on the ground in the Philippines and we're the boots on the ground here. And we provided and set up a training class and session and all the hiring mechanisms and back office things to be able to deliver those five VAs in three weeks. And three of those VAs, four years ago, three of those VAs are still working for those companies. Oh, wow. The others, things have changed in their yeah, lives yeah. and the businesses but they're still there. That's and incredible. from there it grew out because other people were coming to us and say, Hey, you're happy. You, you created success yeah. for this company, you know, word spreads. Yeah. And, uh, some, you know, they come to us, you want to do this again? And so we created this staffing business to help businesses fill those holes of areas that they're not always good at, or they don't have the time to do tasks that are, I don't want to call them mundane, but, you know, answering the phone about what your product can do and getting proposals and pricing sheets out to folks over and over and over all day long is, is mundane for a business owner. And if I can be more strategic and less tactical and let my virtual assistant be tactical, it's a big advantage to me. Well, that's incredible. So, I mean, this was something that you guys weren't even really looking to do and it just, um, it came to you because of what you were doing inside of your own business and, and but you were open to it, obviously. Right. And, yeah, um, yeah. and so, you know, as you were telling your story, I'm just thinking, I was, you know, I'm a big football guy. I'm a big sports guy. And I always relate like championship leadership. I automatically will think of some of the great coaches or some of the great players and, and uh, the, you know, the Belichick's, the, the Sabans, the Landry's, you name it, the Don Shula, whatever. Um, they've all didn't start out as Super Bowl winning coaches. They all started in the high school level or the college level or the, the assistant uh, get back coach, like just, you know, doing anything and everything they could until and just work their way up. And that's what I was hearing in your story is that 
you know, you, you went from the outside sales job and maybe saw a little bit of the future and had this vision of like, we're really not in control of our, of our earning power or our, or our future. If we get hurt or sick, we're out of work, we're not making money. And so you go and you start this business and then that rolls into being a real estate agent, to being a broker, to being property management. And all of a sudden now here you are with the higher smart VAs company <laughs> and uh, you know, a championship level leader is always open to keeping up with the times, number one, right? Yeah. Because things change, you, you stay ahead of it. And uh, that's kind of what I'm hearing for you guys. And so where did that come from? Well, I'm an idea guy. And, yeah. um, you know, it, I've come up with dozens and dozens of ideas that we've created, online businesses, online trainings, products, support systems, and so forth. Many of them didn't work. You know, it sounded like a great idea, but there wasn't a, a customer base out there for yeah. it. Um, but it started for me when I was a little kid and I was in my single digits, you know, nine and yeah. then at 10 and 11 years old. It, they were building houses around my neighborhood. And I said, I bet all those workmen are hungry and thirsty. So I got my little red wagon and filled it up with sodas and <laughs> crackers and stuff. And I went and sold it to them. Uh, uh, awesome. you know, I borrowed the money from my parents to get started. That, that was kind of my original lemonade stand. But I'm always thinking about better ways to do things. You know, I walk into a Starbucks and I start rearranging how this flow should be and what should be changed. And, and uh, Anne's finally shut me down. She says, no new businesses, no more <laughs> new ideas and things. But I, I, I like to solve problems and be creative with that. And then Anne is a great implementer. So she can, we can talk, you know, we'll go on a long trip and talk and share ideas. And then she'll take all those thoughts and put it into the business plan and make it and implement it into a, a, a system. So, and that's how I mentioned earlier, we're a perfect match for this because of the skill sets that we have. And we're complimented that we're members of a group of business owners gets together. They said, you're one of the few people, one, that can work together with your spouse. Yeah but two, that can keep things moving because most business owners, they're good at something, they start it, but they lose interest and they go off into something else or they're not good at what they're doing. And uh, so our matching skill sets have worked out really good on this. <coughs> yeah, well, let's, let's talk about that because I was thinking about that as well. And as you know, you're married and you, you're bringing business into your marriage, obviously, and um, again, championship level leaders that they, they don't, they're not doing everything. They, they have to rely on this team, right? And, and they have to be able to give, empower the team to be able to do that. And you guys seem to be able to work together and take your strengths and her strengths. And you have your departments, she, she has her departments and there's clear defined, it sounded like there's clear defined roles inside of those. Like if it's your department, you're the one that's making the final say, not that you're taking uh, input from her. Uh, that you will consider and vice versa. Um, but to be able to do that, it's, you know, it sounds easier or it makes sense, but not a lot of people are able to actually put that into play for themselves. And so again, that's just a testament to what you guys are doing. And, and I think that's a big reason that you don't see many couples working together because it's, they can't figure that piece out. So is that something that you you, you both had when you 19 years ago when you first started or is this something that's really kind of developed over time and you've learned to uh, figure out over time? Well, we had started looking at, as we started developing our business, our first one about <clears throat> investing in real estate and becoming uh, landlords. And at that point, we started seeing the evidence of, oh, you've got this skill set. You know, Ann always jokes that I didn't know how to change the seat on a toilet till I met Mark because, you know, I, I could build houses. I built three houses from the ground up before that. So we could buy houses and I could do all the work <clears throat> and knew how to run the marketing part of it to get the tenants in and then all the processes there. And, you know, so we started seeing that line of specialties that we each had and we started to grow towards that and said, well, you take over this part. So that'll free you up from having to worry about it. I'll take over this part. And I mean, it's, 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 we drew up the departments on a sheet and put our name, just like on any org chart. Yeah. You know, 
you're responsible. You know, ultimately it all flows up. Um, right. We set our businesses up 50, 50, but um, we, it, it all flows up to that person. They have that final say so. And so that definitively set out early on how we were doing things. Um, so then what would happen is, you know, I'd come up with a new idea uh, we start putting it together and the implementer. Um, and then I, I'm the proverbial sales guy. So I'm out there trying to push it, sell it. We do a lot of public speaking and exhibiting. And so we do a lot of selling off of a stage or in a, uh, uh an exhibiting type situation mm -hmm. or smaller groups where we're talking and, you know, and it, it, I'm really stimulated by that because I'm a really outward person. And um, so Anne's a lot like me in her personality profile, although she's a little bit more inward. Um, so, you know, she's more happy sitting at home. And so she gets all that work done and then I get all fired up and I can go out <laughs> and what she's done and sell it. So it, it, it's been a good compliment. We've worked with a lot of individuals and uh, trying to, coach partners, whether they're uh, married partners or just friends partners. And, and it's tough. It's tough in a marriage. It's tough starting a partnership. And I've been in partnerships with other people that didn't work. Yeah. And um, it, it has to do a lot with the trust level of what you are going to allow that other person to be trusted with and truly understanding that they got your back. They've got your best interest at mind. I mean, I make bad decisions. Anne will make a bad decision. We support each other in those decisions because we took the knowledge that we had at that moment, made the decision and went forward. And we knew that was the best thing. Later we found out, darn, that wasn't exactly, you know, I didn't have quite all the facts or something. We created a, a hundreds of hours to create some kind of a training program that there just wasn't a demand for. And, uh, but you learn that through trial and error, but we know and never blame each other. We don't take it to the next day coming back saying you made a mistake and you shouldn't have sent us down this long road. And, you know, we, we went to a conference two days ago and we both walked out and said, this was a waste of time. <laughs> you, know, you know, uh, you know, we're not blaming each other because one no. wanted to go over the other. It's just, it was a waste of time. We agreed on that, but you don't carry those grudges. And um, that's probably harder to do when you're not married to somebody, but yeah. at least for us, yeah. for some people, it may be harder if you're yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's plenty of grudges being held in marriages, unfortunately. And I think that's a big reason why so many marriages uh, don't succeed. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, good, good to you for being able to, yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, it's hard enough to just have a successful marriage, let alone to have bring in business into that marriage and then also be successful in both. So yeah. I love to hear that. And and, uh, you know, what else I heard there was you wouldn't have known if uh, th that was going to be a waste of time unless you went and figured it out for yourself, right? And it, these failures that you have in business as well, I mean, we all fail, especially in business. We probably fail more than, than most because, you know, it's just a necessary part of continuing to grow and expand. And and you are able to do that and, and learn from it, take the lessons from that and continue to get better moving forward and not look at it as, as uh, this huge negative thing, but something that can actually help you uh, in the future. So championship level leaders are constantly learning and you know losing and learning and persevering and continuing to push forward. So who are some leaders in your life that, you know, yours and, and, and Anne's, that you know of that, that have really impacted you, that maybe have guided you, coached you, mentored you, just as you talked about doing that for other couples. Who are some people, maybe one or two, that really come to mind that have impacted you um, in life and business? Well, when we got started, um, I had heard about real estate investing on the radio. And so we, uh, and I'm sure you, everybody out there has heard all these ads come to our free seminar, right? Yes. So this one was $39 I had to pay, but you could bring your spouse for free. <laughs> and uh, this guy put it on, and then if you wanted to really get the depth of what you needed, you needed to come to the boot camp, which was all weekend, which of was course. you know $1,700, and you know, 19 years ago, $1,700 was a lot of money. 19 years ago, yeah, especially, that right. a lot of money. Yeah. But I, I met Dykes, I met John, and I met 
a couple of other people at that seminar that were the presenters that are still people, my mentors that I look to that give me knowledge, feed me. I was on a cruise with a couple of them uh, two months in February. In February, we're on a cruise with a couple of them. One of them's daughter who's now grown up and in the business and uh, a couple of hundred investors that all get together with common interests. We get together on a cruise and talk about best practices. So those, and then, you know, the, the books the Robert Kiyosaki books and, uh, um, you know, Ristad Pordad, the yeah. concepts that he has were really uh, stimulating in our early years and uh, playing cash flow to get the mindset and the concept about, investing and, and, and doing stuff and, and starting a business. And, yeah. um, you know, so those were really, really instrumental. And there, there's one person, I don't know who it was, um, but we were doing some coaching and we've had multiple coaches along the way, you know, business coaches and, you know, that, that have thrown certain pieces to us. One thing I think I'll always remember, we had a, a coach and we had a big staff and, we were talking about employees and problems with employees, although you know, nobody else ever had employee problems, but you know, we were the only ones. Right? Yeah, right. And uh, we were talking about, we can't get them to do what we need and the work and all. He says, well, if, he says, how many days or hours a day do you think they're working? And, you know, we got into that discussion. He says, you know, the average employee works about 60%. That means three out of the five days you're paying them, they're really working for you. Yeah. You know, and, and that kind of floored us. And, and made a big impression. And, and, and that was one of the coaches. And then, you know, we had another coach about six years ago that led us um, where we were trying to bring this VA business out, the virtual assistants into the business community. And you know, we took the shotgun approach. Like, I think it'll serve for this business. It'll work for this industry. And it would work across all these industries. So we're trying to be everything to everybody <clears throat> and he's the one that told us get into the niche yeah. get into your niches and we had forgotten that because our early dykes and john had told us you want to be in a certain niche you know so 19 years you know then five years back we we were re reminded about being in a niche and about being in certain types of industries and you forget those things you don't always recall them but then when people remind you and, and, and they're, it's you know, breathtaking to think, wow, I can, I can be 5% of one particular industry and be the biggest there is in the world. Yeah. And I don't have to be in every industry, but right. many mindset, the mindset of many of the leaders and business owners, they get started like, I'm going to do this for everybody. I'm going to be everything yeah. to everybody. And they have a hard time determining what their real avatar, their, their real client, their ideal client is. And, um, you know, somebody helped us. Um, we, we studied a lot of digital marketing and uh, Ryan Dice was instrumental. We spent a lot of time one-on-one yeah. -on -one with him about understanding who our avatar really was and who that ideal client was. That tied in with our coach from five years ago all fit together into us looking at we need to tackle this one industry and become the best it is get five percent of the market share be the biggest and best there is then we'll go off and do something else and if true leadership in business is making those tough decisions that i can't be everything to everybody i just am going to tackle a small niche and it's it's scary as can be because you think, well, what if this doesn't work? If the other works, you know, I've got 17 different industries that are working. But you can't divide your time and your energies, your focus to meet the needs and, and, and the challenges of each of those industries. So, Yeah, as the saying goes, right? The riches is in the niches. It is. It, is. it really is. And, yeah. you know. But we as business owners, we get going and we forget about that. And it's like, so oh, hard, like you said. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's scary. It's like, whoa, I don't, you know, can this really work? Is this really true? And uh, so good for you guys, again, to be able to do that. So what, so let's talk. What's, what is the big vision? Again, four years ago, kind of fell into your lap. It sounds like a little bit just because of some decisions that you guys have made and having some success with, with your personal virtual assistance to uh, have others kind of reach out to see if you could help them to do that for themselves 
to create higher smart VAs. And what's what's the big vision now? It's four years later. Where are you guys at? And where where do you see this going? Yeah, yeah. Great um, leaders have great vision. Well, it, like all business people, when you get started, you don't have time to take off. You're working seven days a week, twelve hours. <clears throat> Finally, we took off and went on vacation. We got down to the beach and got a text from our frontline sales support person that answers all of our selling lines says, Hey, I've gone to lunch and I'm not coming back. Uh, I quit and I left my key there. You know, uh -huh. that, that was our wake up call. But we had that luncheon with people that were in the real estate business and the real estate community. And they were attorneys, they were brokers, people in that area. And we had been comfortable with that because we we're real estate investors and, all, yeah. um, and agents. And so we decided initially, Let's create a VA, a virtual assistant for us that supports us in a, a in real estate business. And uh, so we did that. We started creating it for other people. So our, our ideal avatar initially was a, a small business that has multiple employees that has either attrition or they're growing. Um, attrition means somebody's leaving and you need to replace them. You want to find a way to replace them with somebody that's going to work more than the 60% as you yeah. find we discussed for American workers yeah. and somebody that can do those mundane repetitive tasks so that you and your other staff can do working at a higher level. So we, we initially started supporting property management and word then started getting out and you know, our niche was having lunch with somebody that's at uh, uh, selling uh, and, and supporting software programs for restaurants to do the ordering for their food. And he says, you know, I've got somebody leaving and I need somebody answering my help desk. And our friend says, Hey, you need to talk to Mark and Ann. From there, we started putting people on help desk at software companies that were doing the front initial frequently asked questions, getting stuff worked out, making sure the software is running. If it got technical, certainly it had to go to the, to the, the geeks yeah. in the back room, right? But then, you know, we had somebody, we had a, a janitorial service coming to us and they said, you know, we just can't have, uh, keep anybody working to take our orders, make sure our crews are going to be there on time, that the jobs are done and doing all the follow-up. We said, well, we can give you a virtual assistant. They can work eight to five, your hours only work for you. And <laughs> with that, that grew into them sharing with somebody that was a personal chef that needed to make all the arrangements, get the sales calls. They go into somebody's house and cook. And so they put yeah. the menu together. Somebody's got to order the food, make sure it's going to be delivered, make sure the family's got everybody set up. They got enough chair. You know, so in this, which it, it, our niche kind of grew and it started mushrooming out into those other industries. And if true business people will be patient, it took us, three years to really get to that point of working in our niche, the word starts getting out and people start seeing how what you can do might can be applied in another industry. And so for us, it's mushrooms. I mean, certainly we, we've got the lion's share around real estate and property management. Of We've got the, the majority of the placements of full-time virtual assistants working in that arena uh, but in other areas, we're starting to grow and they're just, yeah. they're coming to us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been quite a journey. So, you know, we've written, I mentioned to you before we got started, multiple best-selling books and it's been yeah. around real estate and it's been around virtual assistants. And so somebody the other day says, well, how do I use a virtual assistant in my business? Yes. And we said, well, we'll write you a book for that. So we, we wrote a, the ultimate guide to, hiring a virtual assistant and you know have it in a published book in a minute we're going to talk i'm sure and i'll give you the link to share with yeah. your listeners yeah absolutely and, uh, you can load that up but it's a great way for businesses to reduce their cost increase their level of service that they're providing to prospects and customers and clients and um, it, it, it's, just, it's been an exciting ride for us. And um, as, as we continue to grow this business, we don't know if there's a separate niche out there that's going to just explode for us 
or you know, we're just going to continue to um, be talked about and over dinner tables and people pop up and contact us and say, hey, so-and-so said, <laughs> you could help me. I need somebody to do sales support. Yeah, and uh, you know that th th those are the great successes and things that you love to have happen. Yeah, I mean that that same question been popping up in my head. I was, you know, as we're talking, I'm like, how, you know, how could how could uh, a virtual assistant help me inside of my business? And and so the, that's I I have to imagine that's probably that number one question that the most business owners have because if you've never done it or if you, you know, cause I'm, I'm familiar with virtual assistants. I know people that have used them and they, they swear up and down by them. And then, uh, but if you've never done it, if you've never used it, there's, there's probably just a little bit of a barrier to get through. Um, because I'm sure it's just like anything. The second that you implement it, you, you go out and you hire one, you see how much, what's possible with this virtual assistant, but it's getting through that. And so that book sounds like an amazing, um, piece of content to help people to to get through that yeah and and we decided waiting to hire our first one was our biggest mistake and waiting yeah. to bring on our second one because you, everybody has decided they needed a logo and they've probably gone to fiverr <laughs> or upwork yeah. and hired somebody for a, a task right yeah um that's a virtual assistant yes space and then a lot of companies need their phones answered and so they, they get a call center to answer their phones by the minute they charge, you know, they have scripts or whatever. And, and those call centers do that. And that's a virtual assistant too. Um, what we wanted when we got in this was somebody to answer our phones and answer those questions and do those things that we needed done. But I wanted it under my control. I didn't want it in a call center where there's 42 different people that are reading the same script, but you know, each one reads it differently because they've read it four times or they've never seen it before, right? <laughs> so we wanted to have that control of somebody working for us on our platform, our so systems and software, our hours. So, you know, if you called my company right now, Hannah or Bonnie or Adele on, uh, on the other side of the world from us, yeah. 13 hours difference would answer the phone because they work my hours, which is their, yeah. their bad hours, right? Their, right, their right. graveyard. And they would say, oh, you want to talk to Mark? Sure, I'll transfer. And the phone will be transferred right back to my extension here. Nobody's going to know that the phone call has gone all the way around the world. Yeah, yeah, right. And that's the kind of control that we wanted. So we set up our systems and processes to be very unique. And we started out, there wasn't other companies that were doing this with full time dedicated to you, virtual assistant, work your hours, work on your platform. So they're just like an employee. There's really no difference except you can't touch them. They're on the screen or you hear their voice. And you know they're in our staff meetings, they're in our planning meetings. Uh, we do weekly reviews, huddles. They're as knowledgeable about what's going on in our business as any employee ever was. They're working in the Philippines where they're it's their night. So there's no disturbances. They set up home offices. So they don't have disturbances. I don't have office drama. Right. You're not here talking about, you know, hey, did can you imagine the Monday after the Super Bowl? Did any work get done in America? Yeah, not, not How much very well. <laughs> office drama and conversation went on, right? Hey, that didn't happen. The people over there in the Philippines, they didn't care. They were just answering yeah. our phones and working. So we set up this very unique uh, business with the unique offering. And, and it's, you know, we, we do sales support, back office, we do customer service. Uh, we have accounting for bookkeeping and, and basic accounting type things that are being done. Uh, and, and we place people in those areas um, and, and general administrative and office support or uh, an executive support. I've got one client that she missed her son's event at school because she hadn't read the son's newsletter when it came out. <clears throat> so her VA reads her son's newsletters and everything that comes from her school, highlights what needs to be read by this executive. This is a big high powered executive making yeah. a lot of money. <clears throat> Doesn't yeah. have time to read that. Yeah. Hate to say that. She loves right. her son. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Puts on her calendar, you need to be at your son's event. Yeah. And has changed her life, you know, making sure that people's yeah 
birthdays or whatever to remember. So you can have a virtual assistant the way we've set it up to do any and everything you really need to be done. Yeah. But it allows me to work at a very high level when I don't have to be answering that phone, somebody calling in saying, hey, I'm interested in your product. Can you send me more information? And uh, so that has been very refreshing. And one of the biggest things is the, the cost in using people in the, in the Philippines. Today, our cost to our clients is $9 an hour. Yeah, wow. That's all in. And you know, yeah. you've got employees, you know, you, you've got your cost of your employee, you've got your space, you've got your technology, then you've got payroll taxes and all the other things and health care. We give health care to our VAs. It's included in the nine dollar. <coughs> you can't find anybody wow. that wants to work for thirty dollars an hour and yeah, right. the level that you need in America and many of the states. Yeah. Um, so it, it has gone over really well to have have this high level of service and then a, a cost savings to these companies too. Um, and then it's allowed those entrepreneurs to really excel in growing their business. If that's what they're best at doing, they can spend their time working on strategies instead of being a technician. Mm -hmm. Their staff can actually excel and do the things that they enjoy to do yeah. rather than the drudgery of the, uh, you know, our property management division, <clears throat> we went to our, uh, our one person at that point was uh, one property manager we wanted to keep around. We were managing, in this case, it's hard for everybody to imagine, but 150 properties, one person, that's a lot to do. Yeah, wow. And we said, well, you know, we don't want to replace these people that have just left. I'll be glad to increase your pay if you can take on more doors. What could you take on? She says, I could take on 50% more if I didn't have to answer all the emails and all the phone call inquiries that come in about, in this case, is the house still available? Mm -hmm. Is it rent? All those questions. We said, fine. So we got her a VA. It's not our VA, yeah, it's Michelle's right. VA. Yeah. So Michelle now does 50% more doors. So we took the savings over the employee that we had doing that job and split it with her. Yeah. She's a lot financially happier. Yeah, she's yeah. Phone ringing. It's, it's peace and quiet at the office yeah. and uh, then have those emails all day. Now, you know, and you, like you and I, Ann and I probably get two, 300 emails a day. How many of those really need your attention? Four, five, eight. Yeah. yeah. So I have somebody skims through all my emails, deletes the junk, responds to the ones that can be responded to with clip and paste type responses and sends to me the ones that I really need to put my time and attention on and can, you know, think, you know, that's a savings of probably an hour plus a day of just not combing through somebody's email. Right. So the, the power of what we've been able to offer to our clients has just been tremendous. And then they come back just like we did say, boy, we should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> and I want a second one. And, yeah. and, Anne was interviewing somebody earlier today. They wanted one and they ended up hiring two. <laughs> um, you know, cause we've got a great process to make it easy for hiring instead of putting ads in like most businesses do shuffling through talking to people, testing, hoping background checks, all of that. <clears throat> we do all that through our relationship and about 1% of the people make it through to our clients and all our clients have to do is spend about an hour and a half on the phone interviewing the top three that meet their requirements to find out which one will best fit the business, be in the relationship with the people that they're going to work with on a day to day and, and, and fit into that environment and fit well. So you've got three great candidates. Which one do you like best? You choose them, they start working. It's, it's been great for our clients and a big cost saving. So. Man, that's, uh, that's, that's incredible. I love it. It sounds like you guys have an incredible process and, and uh, just to hear how it saved, you know, your property manager and her being able to take on 50% more just by hiring this VA is an incredible story in itself. So um, I'd love to wrap this up and 
and just let us know, yeah, how can people find out more information about you? I know you got the book, so please let us know that. We're also going to put, I believe you have a link for us, for our listeners, so that we can put yes. that in the show notes so that they can ha access that as well. So yeah, just give us some info on, on how we can find out more about you and, and your wife. And yeah, we wrote business. this, The Ultimate Guide to Hiring a Virtual Assistant, and uh, they can get an electronic copy at hiresmartvas.com slash podcast. So okay. they go to H I R E S M A R T V A S dot com slash podcast. They'll get a link to be able to download an electronic copy of it. It's an easy read. It's a, a simple to go through and understand. It, it creates a lot of interest. People will contact us, tell us more. Um, we really appreciate having the opportunity to be with you here today, share our story of how we grew in our business and how we took on those challenges, uh, scary and tough ones many times. Yeah. And um, appreciate you letting us share our book with your folks that are listening and your listeners. Because, like you say, people start thinking, well, I bet I could use a virtual assistant. How could they Absolutely. apply in my business? And so I know you'll be downloading those. Uh, well, I'll be calling yeah. you. I'll be, I'm going to be, yeah, we're going to connect <laughs> for sure. I'm, I'm in. You've, you've closed me. So, uh, so yeah, I'll be in touch for sure. And I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time as well. So thank you so much. It's been great having you on the show and uh, we'll, we'll get that. We'll make sure we get that link out there because it sounds like just a great resource and, and just appreciate you being here. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, sorry, she's not here. I hope it inspires some of your listeners to continue to build, get in, grow, and start some businesses. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you.